Okay, folks, here's the deal. The other day I was pre using Craigslist and I ran across this or eBay, I guess it was eBay. I ran across this beautiful little old transmitter from Leo Meyerson W0GFQ's days when he was running the World Radio Laboratories, WRL we call them, over there in Council Bluffs. He used to manufacture ham equipment before it was ever popular. And Leo made a lot of money on it and got a lot of hams in business. There's the case for this little device right down there. It's called the Globe Scout Transmitter, model 65. This is a wonderful little device and hams all over the world had these babies and they started out. I think it puts out about 60 watts, 65 watts, maybe that's why it's called the model 65, I don't recall. And uh, it's a wonderful little piece of work. Very, very fascinating little piece of gear. Now when I was a kid and got started in hamming, Back in the early 60s, early to mid 60s, I had a Globe Chief, which was one step up on this. That was a 90 watt transmitter. <coughs> I've been looking for a Chief to restore, but in the meantime, this baby became available. The lady who had it had run across it, going to the junk pile, she told me, and had it listed for 75 bucks. I told her for 40, I'd take it off her hands and. Not only was it a deal, she actually delivered it to me down at the Two Fine Irishmen, the bar right down the street here, and we had a little talk for a while. Very interesting lady who makes a lot of extra money, she told me, by saving things from the junkyard, and I am really glad that she did, especially in this case. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to restore this little baby, get her going again. A little nostalgic. I mean, I've got my, you've seen my gear over there in the council, 2,000 watts of power beaming at you every hour, 1,200 watt uh, linear and a 2 kilowatt linear that I can only legally run at 1,500. So this is a far cry from that modern equipment, but I'll tell you, it's one of the things that us old, old timers kind of like. We like, the, we like to restore the old stuff and play with it too. It just takes us back in time, like miniature little time machines. We're going to make a few mods to it as we work on it here. For example, uh, back in the days when we only had two wire plugs, we had these things to plug into the outlet. This one's pretty well dried out. It's not, not going to make it through the final cut here. Nowadays we have the grounded three-prong plugs. We're going to put a, a new uh, power cord on it, ground it. We're probably going to have to replace uh, some are all of the electrolytic caps. Those things tend to go haywire over time, and, and we'll uh, we'll work on that. We'll do that. We'll check any other connections, any other parts that we think may need to be replaced. Check the values of the resistors. These carbon resistors will lose uh, lose their ratings over over time, and we'll replace them with metal film or something. Of that ilk, and some power resistors in there. They're wire round. They're wire wound. They're probably all right, but we'll see. We'll find out. And the switches, if they're a little noisy, and the controls, we'll uh, we'll work them all over here, and we'll get this baby running like new. Yes, we will. In fact, I've got some parts from a Globe Scout similar to this that I tore down one time just to get the coils out of it. And I've still got some of the parts, so if I run, a, I may be fortunate enough. If this meter doesn't work, I might, I might just have one ready to slide in there. First thing we'll do is we'll fire it up, and we'll use this. It's called the Variac. I call it, and it'll. We'll start at a low voltage and just gradually increase it to burn the old gear in. Reason for that is that we want to uh, want to check out the electrolytics, and we want to. We want to uh, sometimes bring the bolies up slowly on them. If they're a little flaky, we'll reactivate them. So we're going to do that. And then we'll see how she looks once we get power to it. We've got it running. Then we'll start on our modifications, conversions, and whatever else. Now, the other interesting thing about this is it was a uh, plate modulated AM transmitter, which is very, uh, <laughs> very. Very neat design, actually. They were pretty cool. You don't see those anymore nowadays. 
You don't see much AM on the handbands, actually, although some of the old-timers still do have a couple of nets that they run. A lot of reasons for that. I won't go into them here. But single side bands, commonly used today, is a lot more efficient. And, of course, Morse code. CW. That's what we'll be primarily interested in on this baby. May never even fire up the AM side of it. I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes here. All right, there's the project in a nutshell. And uh, we'll get started here. We'll hook up the Variac. Well, the old cord was in a lot worse shape than we thought, so even to do our testing here, we just clipped it out and we substituted a new cord, a new line cord, with these wire nets for now. Hold it in there. We put it in permanently. We'll go to that spot right there and we'll put another lug, three three wire, three uh, position lug, and we'll solder it in. But for testing, that's fine. And we've got the Variac cooking away here at uh, right now, turned on and and up to 50 volts. You can see that on the, I believe, if we can get it without the reflection. We're up to 50 volts on the AC scale. We're just letting her kind of burn in a little bit here. You can see our pilot lamp for the filament supplies on. So we're getting a little filament voltage there. You can just barely see, let me catch the light here. Barely see that our power tube, 6146, which is a real workhorse of a RF power tube that's been still used to this very day. In fact, there's a pair of them, there are a pair of them in my, uh, in my current Kenwood rig that I sent out to my son-in-law, my daughter, and grandson. So that's, that's promising. No smoke anywhere. So far we'll let her burn a little bit, burning these caps. Electrolytics. We'll order these new anyway, but for now we're, we're playing around and testing. So we'll just let her run for a bit. So far, so good. Okay. Moving right along. Still running 50 volts now with the uh, with the plate, high voltage plate on, plate circuit. You can see that our high voltage indicator light there now is, is uh, turned on. The red light down there, which means we're ready to transmit. I put in one of my really old Peterson radio crystals there, 7.2 megahertz for 40 meters. Set the band switch dial to 40 meters. And just in case, I plugged a uh, I plugged the dummy load into the antenna jack. Don't know whether we'll be transmitting into that or not, but we're not taking a chance. These connectors are worn out on the inside, these coax connectors, the PL259s sockets, and they're going to have to be replaced. But for now, just as a safety precaution, we'll, we don't tend to transmit with it yet, so we'll We'll lay that in there and let her go. We want to check for our power supplies as we bring up our voltage. Make sure they're working. Check the ripple on them. And uh, figure out which parts we need to order. So we can make sure we've got those babies up and running like new. We're coming along. Coming along. She seems to be in better shape than I thought she was going to be so far. And... Uh, We'll just see. Then we'll get the tube tester out. The old old tube tester I haven't used for years, and I think it's an old Hickok. We'll use that, and we'll test those tubes too. I've got piles of tubes back there in my collection, so maybe I'll get to use some of those. But if it's like it usually is, if any of the tubes are bad, there'll be ones that I don't have. But I can find the little suckers on eBay. Okay. Better than I expected so far. We're moving right along. Moving on now. We've mounted our connection points in here that we're going to solder our line cord to. 
and its connections within the power supply here. So we'll get that part finished. And we're going to put the ground wire on that, uh, on the mounting bolt. So we'll at least have the chassis ground now, grounded. And I've taken out, uh, notice on these capacitors, that one of them here at least, two of them actually, I've scraped it off of this one. Uh, the electrolyte that's, has leaked out. So they're, they're bad, they're not good anymore. We're going to replace those. We've got, we've got uh, four new ones on order here. These are specced at 16 microfarad each and uh, 350 volts. They've been changed once. These are 450 volts, so they're not original equipment. And actually, when you put them in series like that, the voltage, uh, you take the 350, in this case 450, and 450 gives you a 900 volt tolerance. It's the higher the voltage on single capacitor, the higher logarithmically higher the price gets. So it's pretty common to, to use a couple of 300 to 600 volt capacitors to get higher voltages. One thing I, I didn't say at the beginning here is you have to be very careful when you're digging around inside a side of a transmitter like this. This one has 500 volts on the plate circuit of the final. 500 volts DC is enough to kill you dead on a doorknob, so you don't want to be missing missing places where you don't know what you're doing. That's for sure. Now you can see the electrolyte that's bubbled out of this capacitor. So I'm going to remove those. When we get our new ones, we'll put them in. We're also going to check a few of the other caps in here just to just to see the can capacitors, just to see how they stack up. They're a little tougher to find to get with exact replacements. You may have to jury rig something there, but we'll see what we can find. Also, these carbon resistors. Here's a couple of watts that we may want to change out. So. We'll keep poking around and we're doing this kind of on a visual inspection basis. Our high voltage was there, but it was only 450 volts. It should be 500. Uh, there's another electrolytic cap there that we'll probably probably take out. We're not too concerned about that right now. It's in the AM input circuit for the microphone. We're not going to, probably not going to be using AM with this rig. Although I'd like to have it at least operational, just for grins. Here's another one of our can caps there that we may want to may want to replace. And let's see, just a visual inspection of the rest of it. Where it all looks pretty good. There's another few more uh, carbon resistors. We may replace those with metal film. Well, let's see how it looks when we get a little further down the line. So we're making progress. We're definitely making progress. Note that in the circuit where we have two capacitors in series, there are actually two different circuits here for these capacitors in high voltage supply. And uh, the formula for putting two of them in series is the total capacitance of the two equals the one divided by the one over the total capacitance, the capacitance of the first, one over the capacitance of the second, and the third and fourth, and so on. In this case, we have one over 16 by one plus one over 16 from my, in microfarads, and that'll come up to uh, one divided by that being eight, and eight total capacitance, eight microfarad even though we've doubled the voltage rating from here, in this case from 450 to 900, which is plenty conservative, considered that our, we're talking about 500 volts here, and maybe a peak voltage somewhere around 700. So, that's, the, that's what's going on there. We have the caps out of there now. You can see where the leakage has occurred. 
So our new ones will crack that. That's pretty standard in older gear. Doesn't do it any good to just sit around. It's harder on these electrolytics not to run them once in a while than it is to just let them sit, actually. That's the deal there. Well, we've replaced a couple of our leaky capacitors right here. Kind of a temporary installation. We've got, uh, that's in the CW circuit. We had a couple of them here also, you might remember, in the phone circuit. But we got those caps on order. We haven't replaced those yet since we're not going to be operating in AM phone mode. At least for a while. We'll check it out and make sure it works. But we're in no rush to get those. So we're waiting on those. We've cleaned everything up, checked everything out. Checked all the resistors, caps, filaments. Checked the tubes on the tube checker, the old Hickok tube checker. They're all good, and uh, we use some of this electronic switch cleaner. This is really some good stuff to clean out all the switches. You just spray it on and operate the switches, and also the uh, variable capacitors, and spray it inside the pot on the gain, AM gain control. It maybe runs like, like silk now. So, we had to put a new number 47 bulb in the filament pilot lamp. We didn't have a new one, so we, we scalped one out of a, some old sockets we have laying around. And uh, I think we're about ready for the acid test. Double check on top once more and see what we've got up there. All is looking fine on the top side of the chassis. Everything's in place. We've cleaned these. Also cleaned out these variable capacitors. Load controls and oscillator tuning. And there are two pilot lamps are in good shape, ready to go. And we're ready to hook up our external gear here, the key and the, the uh, watt meter, SWR meter and our 50 ohm dummy load and we'll be ready to put some power to it and try her out. See if we've got more work to do or whether she's ready to get on the air. Okay, here's our test setup. Our Variac allows us to vary the voltage from zero up to 117 volts. We've already done that to form our capacitors, our electrolytics that were in there when we spotted the problem with the with the other four bad ones that we've replaced two of now. We'll get the others when they show up in the air. We got our test crystal in there for the 40 meter band. That's a 7200 KC 7.2 megahertz. Peterson Crystal in Council Bluffs, Iowa. And let's see, we've got our Morse code key, CW key here, plugged into the key jack. Our frequency counter there to measure the frequency as we transmit to make sure we're putting out a, the uh, right frequency. And I've got our SWR power meter. Uh, also, uh, which is connected directly to the transceiver, then to the dummy load, a 50 ohm dummy load, so we don't blow our transmitter all to hell by, by hitting the key with nothing attached, no load attached to the antenna. That's our test setup. Now we'll go ahead and fire up the transmitter and see what we got. We're setting up for our initial test. We have our on off switch and, and our gain control for the mic which would go here turned off transmit standby switches on standby phone CW select switches on CW we're not going to do phone during this test Morse code keys plugged in crystals plugged in got our oscillator tune final plate tune and the antenna load clear to the left 
which is maximum capacity. I've got our grid plate, final grid, final plate selector switch for the meter. On the uh, final grid, we're gonna we're gonna set the grid current first. We're on 40 meters, which is or 7200. Crystal um, goes. So, with that in mind, we'll turn our variac on. We'll turn our transmitter on. See our filament light came on there. We'll uh, bring our power up to 115 volts, which is middle of the green. AC, so that provides the AC power. And we'll let her warm up for a couple minutes. Then we'll we'll uh, set the grid current. All right, we have our grid tuned to maximum current. With the oscillator tune control. I'm thinking we should get a little more than that, but we'll worry about that later. And we'll go down and put our meter on the final plate position. We should have 130 milliamp here, so there we couldn't do both. Hold the hold the uh, key down and turn these knobs and photograph it all at the same time. So I've already done that. I've got the antenna load and the final plate tuned final plate to the minimum and then the antenna load up to like 130 milliampere on the output. Okay. We'll check what's going on with our output now. Where uh, the frequency we're at is a little bit off, but that's a 50 year old crystal too. Should be a 7200, 720000 where it 719955, so I'd say that's not bad. That's what our frequency guy says. That's working pretty well. Pretty well. I'm pleased with what we've got so far. Transmit mode, we've got our pilot light working. Plate light tells us plate currents that the plate uh, voltage is, is on, and we're operating at full capability right now. Very nice, very nice. Okay, we'll see how we're performing here. Got the SWR power meter set on power on the 200 watt scale. That's that middle scale. And we crank our output. We're getting uh, 25, anywhere from 25 to 30 watts out, right? Just about on 25 exactly there. Should be getting about 40, but I suspect these tubes are probably have been in use for a while. We could we could replace those. We want to make sure everything works for we before we do that. The final is a pretty common transmitting tube. Low power HF transmitting tube is 6146. And I've probably got a dozen of those in my stock supply there buried in the back. Everything's looking really good, gang. I think we got it. Maybe do a little tuning yet. We'll put our Pastors in when they come. Check our frequency again. Now we're going up. We're getting a little bit closer. 43 cycles off now. All right, that's that's coming right along. Quiet as can be, which it should be. We're still at 130. 130 milliamperes. Maybe I could give her a little more boost there, but that's that's pretty good. Okay. All right, I'd say that was a successful project so far. Good enough to call it quits. And we'll move on from here. Forty dollar trans transmitter. That's all right. Looking for a Globe Chief now. That's a ninety watt input transmitter. So.
probably get a good 60 watts out of that or so. Just sort of playing around with the old gear, kind of fun. Why not? Got to keep yourself busy in this retirement mode, you know. Can't be messing around. Okay. Pat myself on the back here and call it a day, just about. We'll see what it sounds like on our transceiver over there. We're going to ID because our testing here, even though we're on a dummy load, we're putting out uh, we're putting out a signal. So we're going to ID. Test T E S T D E K zero D G. I don't want to break any laws here and go to jail. Like Martha Stewart. People like that. 